Hi, and welcome to Webpian Academy. My name is uh, Dr. Antonella Di Giulio, and I'm a uh, music theorist uh, and a pianist. And I'm the host here on this channel. Um, today we will have uh, um, Logan, who will talk to us about um, piano gym. So uh, let's welcome <laughs> Logan. Let's take these branding things down here. And um, so um, tell me uh, a little bit uh, about your background. So you're not a pianist. Right. Yeah, not formally. Uh, I I have had music education training in that, like when I was in grade school, I was in you know concert band and then uh, high school marching band, and then after that, what, what instrument uh, did you play? What, what instrument did you play? Oh, uh, I was a trumpet slash French horn, and then uh, I I wised up when I got into high school, and I was like, chicks don't dig that. It's going to be guitar, and then uh, <laughs> of course they're pretty much the same, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, treble clef, it works, right? That's all. That's all you yes. need to worry about. So, right. uh, but yeah, that in that way, uh, I uh, I did piano after I graduated high school. I had a, a really cool teacher who knew a lot more than me and was like, "This is how you should practice." And then I was like, "Nah, dog, I just want to play cool music." I was like, "Let right. me play Kingdom Hearts. I just want to play Kingdom Hearts." And she's just like, "Nah." You need to learn your scales and the circle fits and all that other jazz. That's so, always the like, problem, right? The students yeah. want something and uh, <laughs> the teacher wants something else. And then we we mostly fail to combine the two wishes. <laughs> right, right. And then like eventually you get older and hopefully wiser and you're like, dang, she was she was right. <laughs> she was really right. So well, uh, shout I think I think most of the time students don't really know why we are teaching certain things, and we fail to explain that. You know why is it important to learn scales and keys? It is. Uh, it's a two way so. street, right? Like it's it's. Mm -hmm. But like, how do you articulate that? How do you be like? There's a whole ecosystem and a learning system, and and like building that creates a more holistic understanding of why you're doing it. And the kid's like, Nah, dude, I just I just want to I want to look good right. at parties. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to play. <laughs> I don't care about the keys. You know, Come on, keys. man, let me learn Wonderwall. This is all I want to do. This is... <laughs> yes, try it. Yeah, um, and so uh, that's like gen my general music background uh, in, in a general sense. Like, I, I still play music, and uh, I I, uh, I ended up in music after uh, I was learning some some language learning. So I, I went to college, and my, my formal education is in computer science. Right. Uh, a bachelor's of science in computer science, as well as, um, you know, like some some minoring. I was going to be a bioinformatician, which was like, you know, biology and the mm -hmm. intersection of that. Uh, that never right. really panned out. Uh, but that's for various reasons, just because the, the domain is, is just kind of it doesn't pay as well, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, right. Right. I mean, it's like, oh, hooray, capitalism. Uh, and so <laughs> we have to survive. So I, I, I think, right, we can only. Uh, Always no, no, it's kind of like... running the numbers. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but the yeah. the gist of it is, is uh, I am a computer scientist, and then uh, I am a software engineer, as in like uh, my my profession. Right. I I did do a lot of independent video game development, so there are things mm -hmm. that I have where I've, I've made a couple video games, and then uh, after I graduated college around 2012, I moved to Washington State in 2014 ish. Mm -hmm. where I, I was kind of like sitting there and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to live the rest of my life. What do I do next? And I was just like, man, if I'm 80, what am I going to like regret that I didn't do? Just like sitting there and be like rocking back and forth. Those are very good thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And I was just like, man, this is not good. So then I was like, you know what? I, I would like to learn a language. And uh, mm -hmm. I learned Japanese. I went to college again. Not oh, yeah, for like. That, I was wondering because your email has some Japanese uh, uh, things. Uh, oh, the, on my screen? Is that a thing? Or is that like. I don't know. Uh, yeah. If, when you send the emails uh, around, so <laughs> make sure that people know that you're not in Japan and Tokyo or somewhere. Yeah, I, I was yeah. almost going to ask you, where are you actually? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. So this is, I uh, like kind of sorry, 50% sorry for that. Um, I set okay. my, my language locale to Japanese because if you don't use it, you lose it. Right. And uh, the thing is, like, I, I just work in like my computer, my video games, my phone, everything is in Japanese because it's just that's how you keep your language skills fresh. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah, you can so speak, the. You can speak yeah. Japanese. 
Yeah, like, hi, uh, boku wa nihongo ga hanasemasu. I'm not sure what you're saying, but it's okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Iie keko desu. I hope those are nice words. I mean, because that's my yeah. channel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, like, I like I can also speak Spanish, like, si puedo hablar español, uh, soy uh, estaba Arizona, porque uh, yeah. yo necesito hablar español. Like, it's just one of those things where it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> um but like in that sense i uh i i'm i'm a person who who just genuinely wants to learn uh, i really do think that like uh like as a human being you're really not gonna like to self-actualize which is not something that like i really want to like proselytize but like just to say that like if you really want to feel like you're growing you're gonna have to learn and that's the kind of person i am and i i got done like i didn't it's not like i was like oh i'm done learning japanese that's good i mean it's not like i woke up one day i was like okay we're done that's it right we right. use a stamp yeah. but uh i got these certifications uh i don't know if there's an equivalent for piano mm -hmm. but in japanese uh they have these things called the jlpt which stands for the japanese language yeah. proficiency test it's yeah. hosted by the japanese language uh association uh slash organization whatever you want to call it and I forget the Japanese name. Their their formal names are like super long. And uh, it's okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. We right. can live without Just, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but I did get certified, and then I I got to the point where I was like, all right, you know, I it's going to be take a lot of work. Like I would have to go to college and mm -hmm. study in Japan right. to really feel like I was growing. So then I was like, what do I want to do next? And I looked at um, uh, I was like let's go back to piano and one of the things that's really interesting for uh the japanese like le language learning ecosystem is it turns out there's a lot of software engineers and a lot yeah. of like software developers who are like who who want to learn japanese as well i don't yeah. know why this is like an intersection where it's just like software developer japanese and they overlap but might, as a result have to do with video games might maybe you that. know what yeah. it may be that it might be the 1990s who knows? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Are you into Are you into anything Japanese? Are you Do you participate in that kind of stuff? Um, no, I was in Japan. I was I saw you know how many people are kind of used to go to this video game places and play at any time uh, you know mm -hmm. the day or the night. Well, there's so like there's like, anime, there's manga, there's yeah, video games. They're so culturally right. they're a huge superpower, right? Yeah, like, I, I love being there. And then being a pianist in Japan is awesome. You know? Oh, were were you flexing? Were you like, yeah, let me just? <laughs> they, no, they worship you as a god almost, which is you know <laughs> you're not used to that, which is good. <laughs> right that's so awesome yeah. did you get to perform uh while you were there or? no no i was i was presenting a paper at the international conference at the university of tokyo but uh yeah at, oh, wow. uh, yeah i wasn't wow. performing you... the piano just giving a speech but it was just oh, okay. <laughs> i'm sure they loved you i heard they were like oh nihongo ga josu desu like just throwing that at you and stuff. yeah they kind of they really treat you so well as soon as they know that uh, you, you play the piano you're an artist or you go to a university and do something in there that's so just like it'd be really really nice yeah it was yeah, really, yeah. Really no, and that's that's really cool and i hope that that's like i wish a lot i wish i got that reception everywhere right like just going to into the city like into seattle be like yeah come on give me give me accolades let's do this so. <laughs> Doesn't um, happen here. No. no, no, no. And so, but again, to the, to the they would like to say to you, "Hey, my neighbor plays the piano as well," and you say, "No." <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, get right about it. But um, so and there is a, uh, I don't know if you know that there is a connection then between Japanese and piano, you know. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, what? Wait, yeah. wait, wait, what? There's a connection wait, wait. between Japanese, Japanese culture and piano. So really? Is really, really kind of, a, I, I think uh, people in um, overall in China, you know, Japan, uh, Korea, Taiwan, they mm -hmm. love piano. So, and, uh, you know, they're kind of, yeah. You're wow. like, if you're there, you're a piano teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah and uh, when, okay, so back to that point, though, is like, you know, like, there's a lot of people who who seem to really enjoy ja Japan Japanese culture everything right. around that and uh, and then also making software so they they the tooling for that is fantastic I could I can go on at, yeah. at lengths about like the the great ecosystem for how to learn Japanese mm -hmm. and and ultimately like one of the things is like you're not gonna there isn't a one size fits all there's not like yeah. one solution that's something I'm like oh this is the application for you if you want to learn Japanese right. it's not yes. like that. 
but yeah. there are a lot of people who make that possible. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to learn piano again, or I'm going to do uh, guitar. And the problem is, is I have like familiarity. I had a skill set. I already mm -hmm. know music and music theory to uh, like a reasonable degree that going back into piano, I didn't want to just like start from the basics. Right. And then I was like, wow, this is garbage. <laughs> like the piano, and like, I'm not denigrating any of the, the piano uh, software developers out there, but I, I got to be real. It is really disappointing. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, yeah. I, just, I can agree with no, you. No, I, I've please, seen please, it. like back me up. I, I love hearing my so, opinion. Um, I had a few experiences <laughs> with um, uh, students who had used uh, a bit simply piano. They were using, uh, and, I, and nothing against simply piano, right? Because uh, yeah, yeah. they're doing, they're, they're kind of a uh, uh, job in developing something which is usable. Uh, so especially I had the, a uh, little one who had started piano before coming to piano lessons and uh, he was using simple piano uh, and he could play he could read the notes and play but he was missing basically the understanding of the phrase of the music because he was used to kind of look at the notes okay and press that key and then the other key there was no hand position no sense of phrase no really musical sense it was yeah. just like uh, you know look at the it, note play it. the key uh, look at the note play the keys correct uh, and Sometimes even the tempo and the rhythm weren't really, you know, okay because the student wasn't really kind of actively yeah, yeah. thinking and understanding the rhythm. So the only thing was like, uh, like playing a video game, right? Right? Yeah, you see yeah. The, the C on the uh, uh, on the screen and you play the C and then you see the E and you play the E and so on. But it was not really kind of yeah, yeah. Thing. And so I actually, I so like this is not the first time I experienced this yeah. too. Uh, have you heard of a game called Rocksmith by, by true, Ubisoft? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's it's people there's there's like a community for Rocksmith and they're like, oh, I love it. It's amazing. And I, I got on the hype train. I was like, oh, my God, this is cool. It, it gives you a USB connection. You plug it into your PlayStation or Xbox or whatever. Yeah. And then you plug it into your guitar and it'll do pitch detection correctly such that it'll translate to the game. But the problem is, is you're only learning songs. You're not learning music yeah. theory. You're not learning anything right. really yes. deeper. They have these cool things like jam sessions, but like. I like yeah. a holistic level. I always, like, I always think, yeah, I always think of uh, um, learning music is like learning different subjects at the same time. It's not that yes. you just learn, you know, the one piece and then you can mm -hmm. call yourself a musician because then, you know, you don't know how that <laughs> piece is written and you don't know how to read the notes. You don't know anything about the rhythm that you're playing. You don't know about, the, you know, you don't know all those other things. Well, yeah, yeah, you can play that one piece. And then what about if you want to play something else, right? Dude, so, for so real. And it's, it's not just about playing the piece, but like if you inspect it, it's like, okay, what key are you in? Are there any key transitions? What does that right. mean for yeah. like your actual like bass tone? And it's just, it's really frustrating for me as a person who who's, because it's not the kind of learner I am. I'm not. I'm not a very like rote, do the thing over and over. I'm like, I want to know why. I want to know the impetus and go from there. And so, so I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build the tool that I want to learn. And um, that's that's where Piano Gym comes in. And I don't know why it took me 13 minutes to get to this point. I should have started with <laughs> with this. <laughs> but like, uh, for for everybody who is watching, Piano Gym is like a, a learning and a practice ecosystem. It's focused on uh, prioritizing music theory and performance skills acquisition. And we do that through things like flashcards and we pair that with modern learn, 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 rated feedback. And we try and do progress tracking to support that. So that way, uh, really all you have to do is show up to piano gym and, and do your reps. And the yeah. idea is that we help you with deliberate practice as well as supporting your ability to do ad hoc uh, practice for whatever you want to do, uh, mm -hmm. which really means like you show up, you do your reviews, and then you can go off and practice Kingdom Hearts if you want that sort of thing. Uh, and we, yeah. we built this on a, a standard called Music XML, which is meaning that yeah. if you have a piece of sheet music that you can export it, like say from Muse Score, you go right. to Muse, you down Music XML, and then you can actually upload it to Piano Gym. And this kind of goes a step further because uh, you, you as a teacher, like not not you, Dr. Antonella, but like you in a general sense, uh, if you're a teacher and you want to create a curriculum for your students, what you can do is you can go to Piano Gym and create your own school. And we have landing pages for your school. So if you go to drantonellaschool.com, like Piano Gym slash Dr. Antonella, like it will have a landing page for you. And um, I don't know. Uh, would you would you mind if I can share my screen real sure, fast? Sure. Yeah. 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 
So um, I don't know yeah. how to switch that over, but it is. Uh... You, do you want me to add it? Yeah, is that is that okay? I don't know how to. Yeah, yeah there sure, we go. Sure, yes. <laughs> yeah, so the like this is this is piano gym in a in a general sense, and for anybody who who is watching, like you can go to this landing page and view this uh, whenever you want. But basically, the gist of it is you log in, and you're going to get this learning dashboard, and it's like here's your reviews, and we have this whole uh, searchability piece where you can browse for schools. And if you're looking at a school, you can actually go to their uh, their school landing page by clicking this little explore button, or you can expand it and see the content that they have. And we're, we're awesome. using something called the Mayron Cole Piano Method, which is a, a, a sheet music book that's free and publishable. It's actually, um, yeah. it's on the free piano method, it was a free piano method.com. So what's really cool about Piano Gym is you go here, you can actually print this book for free or use it online. Hmm. And it pairs yeah. directly with Piano Gym right here, and yeah. uh, you can actually practice the content. And so, what's even better is like you can explore this content ahead of time by going to this landing page. So you see how up here it's pianogym.com schools uh, Mayer and Cole piano method, and then uh, you can see the courses, the lessons, the resources, which is the sheet music and the flashcard set. And each one of these kind of contributes to the actual piece. And even better is like. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to enroll. You can do this for free without signing up. And uh, this awesome. is a garbage. Yeah, it is cool. I really like it because it's like, so, again. Let, yeah, may I ask you a question? So uh, how do you, now if I'm a new user, right? And I would mm -hmm. like to use something. So how does it work? I go here. I just, mm -hmm. you know, pick the level. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, this one. And yeah. then how does it work? So uh, the, 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 the piece is read by the, on the platform or mm -hmm. kind of it's played but at the platform and I should repeat that or how does it work? Okay, so yeah, so there's a couple things. So let me show you real fast. I'm just going to demonstrate just like sure. how to yeah. play, which is um, you can uh, mm, worried about talking and performance at the same time. But basically <laughs> you can uh, you can you can play this like this. And it gives like graded feedback. Just like, uh, think of it like Dance Dance Revolution, right? Yeah. Where you're trying to get a score. And this isn't something that's revolutionary. It's just something that's helping you do feedback. Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry, this one's a little longer than I anticipated. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. The tempo. Okay, so, and so at the end of it, this is the part that I want to kind of show is really that when you get to the end of it, you get this grade and you get a general grade of like a, a C, 64%. Uh, and there's a space repetition grade here. And so the idea is that this is just like your general grade where it looks mm -hmm. at the uh, at the overall performance, which I apologize for my performance. That's no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the gist of it is, is that you can, uh, you, you will get graded feedback at the end of it. And then yeah. it does say like, we, you either failed, you struggled or you passed. And uh -huh. failure means that if you if you mark it as okay, so let me step back. It tells you the grade that we think you received. But you yeah. as a learner, maybe you're tired, maybe you're sleepy, maybe you're just like, I just don't agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm I'm going through a phase and I don't believe you. So <laughs> yes. I, I what you can do is you can always override that opinion by selecting that yourself. So we we say here's what we think you did. And then you can say, nah, I really think that that I passed that grade. And then yes. what happens is you can start the next review. So the idea is we give you this ability to uh, like review this information. And then it's up to you to kind of determine if that is the uh, like the the agreement on you. So like really we want, yeah, so the goal is like, and this is this is one of the important things, like I can go on at length for this about piano gym. Piano gym is free. Piano gym is meant to be the like a tool, a community. It's not about right. like, oh, use this tool only, but it's meant to be a community for people. Right. And it's also supposed to be empowering the learners and teachers. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here yeah. to give you tools just to say, make it. And it's, it goes doubly for students because right. the issue is, is like, if you review something, maybe you're tired, maybe you're, you're like just not feeling it. But mm -hmm. we also give tools that are like uh, allowing you to like, if let's say you wanted to only practice the first two measures here, uh, yeah. What we could do is we could just, uh, sorry, my typing is not working today. Uh, you can click this, click this, click this. And what's even cooler is you can set this to loop it. So like when you, when you practice. It, 
it will automatically loop it for you so that you can yeah. just keep focus practice and then you can do things where you have like a, a faster tempo where you're doing like one uh 160 yeah yay. <laughs> and uh and then when you practice it's like and so these are tools that are all built into piano gym and the whole focus is not to really force you into any mm -hmm. specific way but to give you the tools to practice and focus on yeah. and again right now what you're looking at is this is just the school landing page this has nothing to do with like you as a learner really the mm -hmm. workflow as learners you go in to piano gym you would click this start reviews and then and and hold you'll see that you have all these reviews to do and you just literally show up and you play these songs and practice and if you you don't feel like you know it, you can change the tempo, you can change the measures, you can practice it right. at specific uh, emphasis and then and then just work through it. And the goal is, is when you complete that flashcard, uh, we will make sure that you can uh, schedule it at another time. You never stop learning a flashcard. It's just every day, it'll be like one day, two day, four day, eight day, 16 uh -huh. days, provided you are passing those flashcards, which is up yeah. to you to determine that. And eventually it'll be like a million days and you'll just never see it again. And this is based <laughs> yeah. on space repetition, which um, I can go on at length. I don't know if you know about this, Dr. Antonella. How much do you yeah. know about that? Uh, about what? About the space repetition? Uh, oh, so... I'm sorry. Are you, are you muted? I'm, I can't hear you right now. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm not a mute. <laughs> oh, that's on me. That's on me. That's on me. I'm a, yeah. I'm a dingus. So, but <laughs> yeah, how much do you know about space repetition? Um, not much. You can tell me more. Okay. Uh, back in the day, 1885, around there, there's a guy yeah. who was, uh, his name was, uh, what is his name? It was uh, Herman Ebbinghaus. And mm -hmm. he, he, he's not like the guy who made space reputation. He was a guy who, he, he sat down, he was like, I'm going to write totally crazy words, just absolute crazy words. They don't mean anything. Yeah. And he would try and see how long it took him to remember them or forget them. And he graphed it out. And I don't know if I, let me see if I can find, uh, if I can find this image real fast. He created, uh, he created something that's kind of, it's called like the forgetting curve basically. Uh -huh. um, and this is, this is called the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve where uh, he, he kind of tracked this uh, where they're like, if I over a specific amount of time, this will kind of just fall from my short term, medium term, long term right. memory. And then that was kind of it. And people like people really respected him in the sense that he was a psychologist. They listened to what he was saying and they were just like, all right, that's good. Cool story, bro. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. eventually they were like, um, they came along and there were other people who uh, I, I forget his first name, but there's this guy named Leitner who, who took this and he was like, you know, we could turn this into a system. We're like, uh, bot, we can make a box of flashcards and, and flashcard one would be the immediate day. Flashcard two would be every two days. All right. Box three would be every four days and so forth. And then if you failed, you moved them back. If you passed, you move them forward. And eventually, much like that, you would move on. Uh, and then there's this there's this guy who's who's his name is uh, Piotr Wozniak, and he's mm -hmm. he's he's known for Super Memo, which came out in 1985. And uh, the whole thing with him is that he he was like uh, he he made his own research. Right, this guy is like a, a bit of a Renaissance guy himself. Mm -hmm where he created his own, uh, his own curve to determine like that, his Wozniak forgetting curve. And Super Memo is basically the more modern version of this where it kind of came out and mm -hmm. he was formalizing this. And it, it came out as a very popular product that people were like, oh, this is, this is really cool. I'm, I'm forgetting and now I'm, I'm actually retaining. And he turned yeah. it into Super Memo, a product for that. And honestly, I don't know where that is at as a product. I know some people like it, some people uh, hate it, uh, whatever you feel could be your thing. Uh, and then, you know, there's tools like Duolingo that came out and they were actually using space repetition. And now mm -hmm. they, they, the fun fact, Duolingo is like, now nah, we're taking it away in like 2019. And then the, the community was like, no, you suck. We want it back. And so they yeah. brought it back as this like shattered interface where when you forget something, uh, you can relearn it on the specific uh, level. And then you yeah. will then uh, have it kind of refreshed in your memory, moving it back yeah. into medium long term memory. And so... Yes. Uh, the whole gist of it with space repetition is it's not it's not a silver bullet, but it is a really yeah. cool learning technique. Uh, yeah. And I'm never going to be so, a guy. 
Oh, if, you, if you, the more something is connected to something that you know for sure, so to mm -hmm. the long-term memory, the more that new something is connected to that, the more you remember that. So I mean, I and it, it takes, sometimes I don't it, feel like my brain works like that because I'm just like, it oh. does, it does. But um, so yeah, you know, when we receive all the information that we receive, are kind of taken into the prefrontal cortex. So what we are you are saying to me today, right? I remember that right now right yeah, yeah. But maybe tomorrow i would need there will that. be a quiz tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> thank you um there will be a, a, a tomorrow i won't remember that so i have really come to repeat that kind of information i i, I, I will remember certain things but not everything so mm -hmm. i would have to repeat that in order for mm -hmm. This information will be more connected to my long-term memory and Absolutely. then slowly the more i repeat mm -hmm. the more kind of uh, those uh, um knowledge will become reflexive so you you tell me something and i know that right away but the, it, right right it like pop quiz hot shot, shot. what space repetition yeah <laughs> yeah 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 but uh, the, the thing is, is like this isn't like, oh go ahead go ahead sorry no but at the level of uh, neuroscience it's kind of explained that way so that the more the information is connected to our kind of uh, a reflexive brain, right, to the mm -hmm. primitive brain, brain that uh, that we have, then the, the more we can remember forever, like a native yeah, language. Yeah. I mean, I cannot forget Italian. How how can I? But uh, right, if, I, right, right. if I have to speak German, that's a different thing because I learned German, you know, <laughs> when I was a little bit older. And then maybe if I won't speak English for a few years, the only thing I can remember for sure is Italian because, I mean, I have my entire life uh, of Italian, right? <laughs> so it's a kind of a little bit that same thing, you know. For so. real. No, and it's it's 100% that. And, you know, there are multi-modes to that, right? It, like you're mentioning, language is an aspect of that. Age right. is an aspect that if, if you're like yes. a 10-year-old kid, you're going to soak it up like a sponge. If you're an old person like me, it's going to take a little more work. And that's the right. gist of it. But it's, again, it's, it's not a silver bullet. This isn't, this isn't something where it's like, this is my way or the highway but as a learner uh especially for learning japanese i cannot tell you how useful it is just to have somebody be like hey dog did you remember this and i'm like no i didn't thanks for bringing <laughs> yeah. that up yeah. and that's the whole point of with with uh with with piano gym is like you know you you can do whatever you want in this context to practice and uh, I'm, I'm increasing the tempo just so that this will go through uh you can press like the s key to just get it to grade so you don't have to be obligated right. to do it eventually i'll be doing like keyboard piano input which is silly and i don't agree with it but it is a <laughs> thing that you can do um yeah. and so what happens is when you pass these sort of things uh you can start the next review now i also want to call this out which is really cool i don't see this in any other piano applications it kills me that i have to work like between different avenues or touch or tap to navigate. If I do corded input, which is what I'm trying to advocate right here, the C4, E4, G4, and I know that's a little inflammatory. I know some people don't like scientific yeah. pitch notation, but it's the best I can do with text. Uh, yeah. You can see that like that will navigate for it. And what's cool is like, let's say you started playing this song, right? You're like, uh, I'm gonna start playing it. It's just terrible. Well, let's, I can rage quit. I can do. And it, like by pressing all of these keys right here, which is just C3 to G3, like all yeah. of them and C4 to G4, it'll reset the piece. And I'm just like, ah, I sucked, rage quit and get to start over. And it's it's something that, again, like this isn't something I'm saying it has to be the only way, but I am saying that these, these yeah. are tools that I've been trying to build out to smooth the friction for practicing and studying and making it so it's more enjoyable. And we do yeah. we do instrument emulation like you can do whatever you want flute like this is sound emulation in the the software uh -huh. itself so it, there's a lot of pieces um and the one of the coolest things that i really want to articulate is uh where like when you when you're studying we have two sets there's your reviews every day mm -hmm. you're studying every day your reviews and then there's your new flashcards. and the idea is like when you start studying, you have no reviews. So you draw a new flashcard, you put it into your reviews, and now you're studying yeah. one more. Sometimes you don't want to study the immediate uh, level one. Like let's right. say you may want to do level two. You can actually change in Piano Gym to start studying different content ahead of time. You don't, yeah. uh, you're not obligated into like linear progression. Mm -hmm. You're just kind of saying like, well, I would rather study this or study that. And it's, right. it's a really cool tool because it's something that like, again, like I would prefer to be able to say, I would rather study lesson three instead of lesson one. And you don't, 
need to actually study every single lesson. We do selective enrollment as well. Piano Gym is, is one of those things where um, you have the means to selectively enroll. So like if I go to this uh, browse schools and in browse schools, I'm, I'm looking at the content and I'm like, man, there's a lot of content. I I'm not obligated to be in like level 19. I can selectively unenroll from that or selectively unenroll from yeah. lesson 23. So there's all these pieces and uh, these are very specific intentional design decisions I made for Piano okay. Gym. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if you as a teacher have uh, like, or somebody who has taught have opinions about this, but like, these are things that I'm trying to build in to like, be like, well, you know, you can or can't yeah. do these sort of things. No, it's yeah. beautiful. I, and uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, I always had in mind this a place online where I can uh, assign to students things without, you know, them having to you know, buy every single book. I mean, sometimes, uh, um, you know, you want to assign something and they have uh, to play one piece out of that book, right? And then mm -hmm. I don't have a flex book where I can put, you know, things <laughs> that just like for that. So that's a mm -hmm. great thing because I could just say, okay, go here and then click here and then practice that, right? Yeah, and, so, and, you, and you're not even obligated to enroll necessarily yeah. too because you can explore it. Going to the explore page will let you practice it. And it's yeah. like, it's, I don't know, again, like my thing is like, Piano Gym is meant to be a community. That's why, like, so we're looking at this from, like, the learning perspective. Right. But, like, if you were a teacher, there's this, so if you click this sidebar, this expands. Yeah. These are all the options. I, 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 so, uh, as a teacher, are you, um, would you be able to assign certain lessons to certain students? So, like, you know, uh, or should, should they go by themselves then? I mean, if I am a teacher, I have uh, all the students, and, and I say, okay, uh, I would like you to practice this, 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 this way. How how does it work? Is there a okay. possibility to assign homework? <laughs> it's absolutely a hundred percent possible. Yeah. If you're if you're like, look, I want you to go to um to piano gym, right? And I want you yeah. to study something specific. We don't we don't have your school created yet, but if you go to um what is it, pianogym.com mm -hmm. slash schools, like if you go to this and you enter this URL, right? Right. You go, this is the school itself that brings up. So if you if you had like Antonella's school or whatever, or Dr. Yeah. Antonella's kick ass school. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the words. Um, okay. The if you if you do that, you could just say, go to my school, go to my landing page, go to this sheet music, and then just study that, practice that. You don't need to enroll in it. Uh -huh. And yeah. then you can you can just practice it. But like it kind of it kind of does feel like you know it would be cool. Like you can't see this on the left, but I'm not authenticated. This is just a, a public. Mm -hmm. I'm not logged in sort of thing. But right. when I'm logged in, I get the affordance of being able to enroll in a, a intentional progression sort uh -huh. of thing. So you as yeah. a teacher, you have this way to be like, well, if you really want to start from zero to 60, uh, yeah. you can you can enroll or you, uh -huh. I can assign you these pieces. And the reason is, is I'm going to go off on a tangent here and I hope you're ready. Get, get warmed up. I did not enjoy my informational interviews with teachers. I, I spent a significant amount of time interviewing yeah. piano teachers and I would I would start every discussion would be like, what is your skills progression? What is your roadmap for students? Yeah. Do you have an expectation for specific skills acquisition from absolute beginner to novice to intermediate to mm -hmm. advanced? And everybody was like, no, I don't know. Yeah. It's on a student by student basis, which I'm, I'm very sympathetic. I'm not saying that that's not how to teach. Yeah. But I am saying as somebody who, who does believe in the, the ability of learning and skills-based acquisition, there is a general roadmap. And whatever you believe that roadmap is, it mm -hmm. could be different. Like you could, yes. you could be like, I believe you shouldn't even touch scales until they know what the X, Y, and Z is, right? Yeah, but, uh, so uh, I mean, it, it is totally true that many piano teachers don't really know what count kind of sequence the student has to learn. So they have no idea what to teach, when to teach it, mm -hmm. because there there are no real. I mean, uh, this not especially here in the states. There's not a school where you know the student can go and say, "Oh, I'm taking this exam." And they said, for example, in Canada, right? They have the mm -hmm. Royal Conservatory, and they have certain levels and certain things. So yeah. the teachers who are kind of participating in that program, they have a certain um, you know uh, a, a map of what the student has to learn 
Um, right. If they right. want to reach level 10 and then become a pianist, right? Right, right. And yeah. it's not to say you're not a pianist if you don't get to level 10, but it's like, dog, if you get to level 10, I really expect you to know your circle of fifths, please. Yeah, right. you're expected to know the, your music theory, some mm -hmm. music history, and then mm -hmm. to know certain types of pieces. Oh, man, and that kills me. Like, music history, come on, right. man. Music, like, not like total tangent, but like music sucks from a notational and like, in t like it, there is no way that it's intuitive and none right. of music yes. is intuitive for, for in a general yeah. sense, I'm just saying. Yeah, like, yes, of course, like, yeah, yeah. No, no, and then and, and it's uh, totally true that uh, there is no roadmap. The only thing that uh, most of the teachers do, and I notice, and that's a mistake, uh, is that they follow certain books. Oh, I use that method. Okay, fine, but you know, that method is really kind of, it's not a skill set. It's a, some students <laughs> really kind of, a, but if you really want to um, adapt in my idea of a curriculum, right? If I want really a student to learn certain things, I have to know what the students uh, need to learn, right? So, yeah. okay, I want the student to know, for example, I have, I have my roadmap, <laughs> I do, mm -hmm. with my own piano students. So, so for example, they would start- This is why the, you're a goat, you're the greatest of all time, you're goat, that's- yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you. So I have, for example, you know, the students, they learn the C major scale with one hand and the C major scale with, a, I mean, anybody can do different, but I know right. what to do, you know, right, they, right. Learn, they learn C, G and D scale first with one octave. Then yeah, with yeah. both hands, in contrary motion, then two octaves, all these cases that I share the same kind of fingerings. Yeah, and then, yeah. then we switch to, you know, they start building chords and inversions of that, you know, uh, in that kind of scale. Yeah, then I yeah. add the arpeggios. And then I add uh, all this case with uh, all the all the sharps, right? So B, B major, F sharp major, C sharp major. And then mm -hmm. we start building chords on that. After that, they start building, uh, you know, uh, chord progression. So, you know, tonic, nice. dominant, uh, tonic, and then, you know, and then build up on top of that. So there is a certain, you know, thing. And then uh, I let the students free. Sometimes a, a student has more trouble in something. So you need more repetition, right? Yeah. So that's something. It might be that uh, you, you switch the piece around and mm -hmm. you, you play, I don't know, the student is, has, ha, is having trouble playing, um, a melody accompanied by chords. What do you do? So you play the first piece, the second piece would be with something similar, similar material. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of a repetition in yeah. a different way, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and so on. So until that kind of skill is really kind of, you know. Yeah, and that's actually one of the, the really interesting things too, is like sometimes you go to a music piece, it's not just about skills-based acquisition, but sometimes you're talking about a piece itself, right? Right, yeah. Where it's yeah. like, here's the first measure, second measure, third measure, build it into yeah. a phrase, build that yes. phrase into like a, a sheet and then yeah. turn that sheet into the actual piece. And right. it's like Piano Gym does that as well. We we support the ability to chop it into single measures because of yeah. that. Because like real disclosure, I'm a big Sonic the Hedgehog fan. Yeah. I really want to learn to play Sonic the Hedgehog music. And so I was, I was messing around with like uh, Sonic songs. And I was just like, you know, like really ideally the best way for that would be to just learn uh, like random pieces for that. And it was killing me because like, there are no, there's no tools out there. There are no tools out there <laughs> built to, to just be like, man, here's a piece of sheet music. Let me learn it. It kills me. And it's, yes, again, I, yeah. I apologize. It's a tangent, but. No, I'm no, just, that's fine. It's, 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 it's totally okay. And it's uh, basically what learners uh, um, experience, right? So, right. I mean, when I was little, I was given a piece of music, figured out how it is. I mean, nobody was explaining me anything, just play it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Right? And that's mm. something that I don't do with my students. So for example, I assign uh, out of a piece, I might assign the, some measures in the middle of the piece, mm. because that's maybe the difficult part, something that they need more repetitions at the end, and something they really need to learn. And the rest yeah. is maybe something that is repeated too many times and they can just sight read. Mm -hmm. But I assign, like, Sometimes in the, my kind of uh, assignments, they say, so practice measure 15 and 16 yes. out of that piece. <laughs> or uh, else. Practice <laughs> the left hand of, right? Uh, that, yeah. that, but that's that's a way that we actually should learn. And then mm -hmm. they, we don't do that because obviously you give uh, a piece of music to a student, the student understands, okay, I have to play the entire thing, mm -hmm. uh, right? Like I read a book, I, I had this, um, I had a weird experience once, uh, somebody <laughs> wanted to have a piano lesson, <laughs> she was an adult, uh, an adult lady, and um, she said uh, that um, she was expecting to play piano like 
reading a book. It was like, it's not going to happen. Oh, <laughs> you're like, oh, because my you sweet know, child, no. You can <laughs> open a book, a piece of music, and just start playing and yeah. side read and just go ahead and play the next one because it's kind of not what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to, no, kind of to no, repeat no. something until it is interiorized and becomes second nature. Right, so that's, right. I mean, um, it's going to, like, sure, when you're at a certain level, maybe. Once, you, once yeah, you've maybe, learned enough, but like, no, not as in a, a new learner. Come on, man. No, and then, and then even, even, I mean, I might side read something, but it's, it's never a performance. Then you know, it's just like not really kind of get up performing freely, and then I can feel uh, really okay with mm -hmm. doing that. It's, uh, it requires some repetition and some memorization, uh, at mm -hmm. least of some parts. So. Totally. Okay. Yeah. And that's, I mean, there, again, there is no silver bullet for learning, yeah. but the, the gold piano gym and like the goal for me is like, again, one, this is free. I don't want to charge because I hate capitalism and I don't think that money should be involved with learning. And if you were to gate learning, it's a real big yeah. bummer because it, it's just like, why, why are but you blocking? Uh, just just uh, no, that, let me, uh, let me ask a question. So, sure, sure, sure. But so you, you have to support this entire thing though. So, yeah. Okay. So if, if it is free, how do you get sort of uh, I mean like okay here's yeah. here's here's the how I do it which is I, I have a I have a Patreon which is like you can throw money <laughs> in my hat but it's yeah. not it's not the same right and and the thing is like again I have some very passionate members who, who are hard who are supporting me but like at the end of the day I I eat the costs of piano gym I I'm yeah. paying for this out of pocket and that's whether that's a flex or that's just me begging being like come on help me out but like <laughs> It is the, re the reality is like, I, I just really like, I, I don't like, again, I this is going to be a tangent and I apologize in advance. Yeah. I hate capitalism. I don't get the point of it. We're human beings yeah. and we're supposed to self-actualize. And if we really want to be better, why aren't we elevating each other? And that's what piano gym is right. meant to be. It's not meant to be, um, uh, it's not meant to be like, Oh, let me turn this into subscription revenue and, and take $5 right. out of your wallet every month. I want to, I want to one help autodidacts, which are people yeah. who may not have access to a teacher. Like mm -hmm. I, it would make me so happy if there were like students in Africa who, who somehow got a MIDI piano and were like, I'm learning with yeah. piano gym. I would probably cry just because like, that <laughs> is the thing is like, I'm like, here's some free content kids. Like you can do it. And like just clap. Yeah. Uh, but like at the end of the day, it really is. It's just like, it's, it's, it's just wholesome dude you really want to help yeah. people be the best version of themselves and that's that's what right. the whole reason is for piano gym and i'm not saying piano gym is the best but i am saying there is philosophically an intent to be good do good and that's, yeah. that's the goal of it I disagree with the idea. I mean, uh, as a teacher, I would, uh, I really kind of did, I had not explored that. So, uh, you know, that I kind of found piano gym, uh, you know, it, it was a kind of really kind of, uh, it was suggested within the videos I should uh, do for my channel, <laughs> and I have no idea. It was a suggestion for from mm -hmm. uh, the, the the applications that I'm using for you know to for, to, for the analytics for like video discovery uh, of YouTube. All that. Yeah, 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 all those things. And it was like, well, I, I didn't know anything about, it. and I looked at the website <laughs> uh, and then I talked to you, but um, but it was uh, really kind of uh, by chance. But I really find the idea really interesting, and especially mm -hmm. for teachers because if you really can uh, um, upload the scores that the students um, might need. I'm going to blow your mind. Do you, do you have a second for me to blow your mind? Is this, sure. uh, yeah. is this okay? So I, I do have a teacher dashboard. There's two dashboards. There's a learner dashboard, which is this. And eventually yeah. there will be statistics, but I, again, I, I have a day job, so I have to, I have to focus yeah. on making money. Uh, 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 tell me what, when did you start this one? It's a pretty recent. recent uh, right? I started it Pro, I prototyped it, right? Like I started prototyping mm -hmm. around 2018. And so let me let me take a quick detour here. When I was learning Japanese, I was like, I freaking hate Japanese learning apps. And this is me because I was like, <laughs> none of them focus on speech, uh, speech yes. production. Yep. They're not like, 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 nande, uh, kimi wa ore ni, like, hanashi kata o oshienai. Like those kind of things. Like, why aren't you teaching me how to produce with my mouth, that's that's how I'm supposed to do. And so I was like, I'm gonna make right. a Japanese app that does that. And then I was like, oh, this, <laughs> that, that fell through. It totally just bombed. And then I went to the piano and I was like, okay, this is cool. And there were all these really cool, uh, really, really cool things about rendering. And, and let me call this out real fast. Um, with Piano Gym, the, there is a there's a, a whole aspect of this that is, that is that this, this, this sheet music rendering right here uh -huh. is, is a huge, huge, like technical feat. 
Um, and I, I know you know this as somebody who's in music theory, but like yeah. engraving and staffs and pitch and tempo yes. and offsets, like all of these are really uh, a well-studied area, but like converting that into the digital realm has been a very uh, big aspect. And so there's a, there's a standard, it's called uh, Music XML. And Music mm -hmm. XML is a, a actual data format that lets yeah. you uh, kind of translate that to mm -hmm. a, an actual piece. Now, what it does is it just says, this is the data, it's textual data. I can show you it's an XML file and it's, it's really ugly. And, and all it is is text. You can't actually read it. And you're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so uh, there's this really cool uh, tool called, uh, what is this? Open Sheet Music Display. And what happened is there's, there's, there's multiple libraries built here. But one uh -huh. of them is called VexFlow. And VexFlow is for rendering engravings. And the other one is Open Sheet Music Display. And I actually work with these guys very closely I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag because I finally got them to put me in their showcases. I'm like, oh, yay. Uh, but <laughs> I like, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. It was a big <laughs> deal. I was very excited. Um, but these guys are fantastic. I cannot articulate. And if anybody does donate, they should donate to them as well because they are the, the, bay, the, bay, uh, like the, the foundation with which a lot of things are built on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Open Sheet Music Display does it, takes these music XML files and allows us to render them now that's just one piece of the puzzle because one of the other big pieces, like this is a sheet music cursor. There's right. graded feedback. None of that is built into open sheet music display. That's me building on other pieces mm -hmm. of functionality. And so like as a, as a consummate whole, we as, a, as like a, an ecosystem of like people who want to help elevate each other, we're building other pieces together. And so uh, Piano Gym, uh, when I was prototyping it, I started with this, this tool called VexFlow and I was actually manually rendering those notes. And then I found Open Sheet Music Display and I was like, oh, okay, we can do this together. And then right. uh, now it's at the point where it's like everything is kind of stabilized. So I started in, in 2018 prototyping this was is really how mm -hmm. I, I started to kind of get into it. But 2019, and actually, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you... Uh, Let's see if I can if I can show you this real fast just for a quick chuckle, because um, I have uh, my piano gym channel real fast just to to get you a good laugh is uh, is I have videos that show where piano gym uh, came from, and I don't know where I put these, but they are. Uh, it's a whole playlist of, I call them progress videos. Uh -huh. And in the, in the progress videos, you can see a, um, let's see right here, uh, a huge, like they, you see new feature live stream and I'm trying to, I'm like, I'm garbage at, uh, what is this? This is a playlist. Yeah. I'm garbage at using YouTube. I'm such a terrible <laughs> social media person, but in this, in this progress videos, I have like 31, uh, progress videos and yeah. In the prototyping of it, this is this started out as just like me in my bedroom being like, hey, this is Piano Gym Proof of Concept. What's up, YouTube? Like, like and subscribe. And uh, it, it really was just a very bare bones uh, product that I, I had started building out. And now mm -hmm. uh, now it's actually a fully fleshed out project that um, uh, I've, I've like rigorously tested and uh, go from there. So you can see. This is me just using a music XML renderer. This isn't even me doing the rendering yet. But then I go into Piano Gym and I'm actually rendering these pieces and uh, showing creation. And I'm just like doing this very, very hardcore at the bare bones using like uh, these REST clients. And I know uh, REST yeah. is this whole technology thing, but basically this is me showing like how it looks. And uh, like if I've got like 31 videos showing the progress from start to garbage to even more garbage to now <laughs> where it's just like, yeah, to where, where it is. It's been a very slow progression and like you can even but, see it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, it takes time. I mean, especially if you are developing something new and that nobody has done before you, it's not yeah. well, anything. So like, if you see this, like you see how there's this garbage piano interface on the bottom and there's this yeah. like, the, the, all this debug information. It's like, this is a piano, this is whatever. And uh, one of my favorite pieces about that is just uh, like, if you compare that to now where like we have this, I, I've completely forgot to explain this. Like we have 
uh, cool tools here to help autodidacts where it's like, these are, you, you look at a note and you're like, what does that mean? I'm looking at sheet music. How do I associate that? Right. Um, like you can press a key and it'll show you how to do that. And if you're like, that's too much information for me, dog, I don't want to see that. You can hide this information or you can hide the grand staff and like toggle this to be a more uh, intuitive sense for you. And the thing right. is like, again, like it's just taken a lot of time and it, I, I've been building it up. So when you ask like, how long, how long ago did you start this? I'm like, oh man, I've been dreaming of this for years. <laughs> that's, really, that's really. Good. That's so, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we might uh, have a Web Piano Academy school on uh, Piano Gym, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So sorry, totally, totally derailed. Sorry. Um, if you're a teacher, what you can do is you can go to this teacher dashboard. There's this thing called the right. curriculum editor, uh, which is right here. And mm -hmm. uh, you can, if you create a school, uh, you can, you can click anything you want. Or you can create a school here, and I'm just I'm not I'm not going to steal. If you can only have one single name, uh, I will delete this so you have the uh, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, so you have access to this. But like, let's say I wanted to create that now. I now I have a Web Piano Academy, and all I have yeah. to do is I have to upload uh, some sheet music so I can be like, this is yeah. uh, uh, oh, uh, I was messing around with the Black Parade. Uh, do you? It's like My Chemical Romance, and it, it was something <laughs> that made me laugh um where is uh ch -ch 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 -ch. where is it you know what? i don't think oh here we go this one uh this one made me laugh so I, I i uploaded this and what happens is this will upload the sheet music and once it does it, it automatically loads it for you so you can start viewing it and immediately yeah. kind of just practicing it if you want to and then uh what's really uh, a lot cooler about that is we can take this and turn it into a flashcard set Oh, one, of the you should, one of the things you should know is like it does take a little bit when you have a bigger piece of sheet music uh, right. just because the size and the rendering in a web browser is, yeah. is a lot more than some. But then uh, we can turn it into flashcards. I probably should have chose a smaller one just for the demo's sake. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go back. Yeah, that's and... fine. Yeah. So and then uh, so I upload all the sheets of music and then mm -hmm. uh, I can create. A, what are the roadmaps that I see down there? This is a, a coming soon feature. So, oh, okay. um, <laughs> these are these are these are there's a lot of things. Uh, roadmaps. Let, okay, so let's let's take a step back. Your teacher, right? And yeah. uh, this is actually like long term vision. Hopefully, somebody sees this video and they're like, "Oh man, I really want to contribute." I'm gonna hit yeah. up Logan. We're gonna be partners, and I'll, I'll I'll be a software engineer and help with this. The thing with Piano Gym is is a uh, on the long. This this is a. Uh, several features. This, uh -huh. this is a feature complete vision. So once mm -hmm. I hit these features, I'm done. I'm not going to build this out, add advertisements, do anything. I just want to get to these specific features. Yes. With Piano Gym, let's imagine you build out a school with courses and lessons. Not everybody mm -hmm. is going to want all those courses and lessons. They they mm -hmm. may just want to do uh, maybe maybe let's say I get to the point where I can do pitch detection dynamically yeah. for anything that'd be super right. cool which takes it from piano to uh, saxophone academy or flute academy or whatever yeah. uh, and then you have all these courses if you want to make it so that those courses are progressed through in order what mm -hmm. will happen is rather than being obligated to do like lesson one lesson two lesson three like this a roadmap will say this roadmap is lesson one three five nine etc oh i see and it will let you enroll in a specific roadmap for your progression. And so you can build mm -hmm. it out to be kind of this, this approach where it's like, I don't, maybe, maybe you want to focus on theory. Maybe you want to yeah. focus on performance. Maybe you want to focus is that, on- uh, Is that the teacher's choice or is kind of a student's uh, choice? It's the it's teacher's, teacher's choice. choice. Okay. The student though, at every step of the way has that ability to selectively enroll. So oh, okay. you want to think of, you want to think of those, like those roadmap pieces as kind mm -hmm. of like a, is this is what the teacher advocates for. Yes. And so if you click on that, then it'll select the correct pieces. But really, uh, the student is in control the entire time. So, mm -hmm. and, awesome. uh, and so what's cool, uh, I will choose a, a smaller piece just again, because the Black Parade is kind of killing me. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to this example. I will choose this major minor um, thing. I'm, I'm supposed to, this is on my backlog right now. I'm supposed to put the scales up for people to study because you know what's surprising is everybody's like, I would like to study scales. And I'm like, hey, me too. I should put those up. <laughs> um, and I just don't have the time. It's either program or do I want to like open Muse score, play the scales, uh, in, like yeah. can, like actually translate it. 
Um, but one of the coolest pieces about this is when you, and it, sorry, when I'm streaming, it does take a lot of resources. Of to, course, uh, yes. It's like my, my poor laptop is like, I can't do it. <laughs> We we know that the computers have problems, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> That's exactly it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make an example flashcard set. And so the first thing is like every time you want to make an example flashcard set, uh, and then you you what you do is um, oops, sorry, I am tabbing in the wrong area. Uh, when you make this, this is like an empty flashcard set. There uh -huh. are no flashcards. And as a teacher. The, I, I had to. I made all the content in Piano Gym using this interface, and I, well, at one point I was like, "Well, when you create it, you you select a flashcard. You it creates a random flashcard name. You right. can either be like flashcard blah 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 or flashcard one, or give it an actual yes. name. And you can select the sheet music. And what it does is it actually renders it below, so you can see what it's doing. Yeah. And this is cool because it's like now you have the ability to actually practice it before you create the flashcard. But one right. of the other pieces is like, yeah, so like you can set you, you to actually determine what the flashcard focuses on. Do you want to focus on a phrase? Do you want to focus on single pieces? And so this is this is cool. This is neat. And um, this is helpful. But let's say you're tired. You're a working mother and you just don't have time for this or you're you're you've got uh, food to cook with yeah. the uh, piano gym. What you can do is you have these tools that's like a creation mode and the creation mode will automatically make it so that you can do, um, man, I forget what I call it. Uh, and again, my computer is lagging because it can't stream and create at the same time. But the, uh, oh, hold on, here we go. Let me, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My poor computer. Uh, if I if I create a flash or I, uh, I go like this and I select the creation mode, uh, I have this mode where you can do sheet music measure split. So if yeah. you as a teacher, you want to just select this sheet music and it will automatically chop it into single measure flashcards for you. And you'll yeah. see here on the left that these are all the flashcards it makes. And it's measure 16 to measure 17, measure 18. And uh, all you do is you can click them to load that, that piece up. And when you do, it'll let you uh, render it so that it'll... Uh, It'll, it creates the the all the the the, the cards for that particular. Yeah, piece so you that. don't you really don't have to do a lot of work to mm -hmm. make these flashcards. You just let kind of Piano Gym do the work for you. But those are flashcards that the students would have just to play, like like uh, you know one measure and then you repeat that measure. Yeah, well, yeah, hundred hundred percent that. And so like again like. This is one of those things where it's like, okay, if I if I if I create this flashcard, then I now now I've created 84 separate flashcards with like three clicks, right. which is insane. Like to be yeah. honest, now and let me take a let me take a quick detour because it's like let me go back to my Sonic songs. I, Sonic is an incredibly complicated piece, but if yeah. you want to study it, the best way to do would be like chop it into one measures, chop it into two measures, chop it into three right. measures, so that you get like the, the separate piece the connected piece and then the before and the after piece yeah. and you're playing those transitions together and then turn it into the full practice piece. And it, it's, it's trivial with this tool to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and what's even cooler is you can like click this as a link to share the flashcard set. So like, let's say somebody wanted to know this, you could just link them to this flashcard set dynamically. So you don't have to really worry about it. It's, I'm sorry, I just get really hyped about it because I'm just like, this is exactly <laughs> what I want for teachers and students. And uh, you asked yeah. me earlier, like, how is Piano Gym going? I'm like, it's great, but it's so hard to articulate the feature set yeah. for Piano Gym to people I think that when I, I, I talk think... to teachers, they're like, this is, I don't want to do this. This is this is competing with my teaching. And I'm like, no, this is a complimentary <laughs> no, no. tool. Like, it's, it's... Yeah, that's actually very useful because you, if you can assign, uh, you know, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, that Web Piano, Web Piano Academy, if you look, a little bit around the very very old videos that I made during the pandemic, uh, it mm -hmm. was uh, like little playmates first line right hand, mm -hmm. <laughs> little playmates, uh, <laughs> uh, you know left hand first line, second line, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, measure fifteen sixteen because those were the assignments that I was giving to my students. You know one hand, mm -hmm. the other hand, and then I started uploading the videos because obviously. Uh, being uh, in lockdown, mm -hmm. um, so it was not possible to really kind of write down anything or to send things in a different way. So I used, uh, you know, um, uh, YouTube to 
just share uh, what the students <laughs> I needed to know. But uh, that, that, that was the way that I was assigning pieces, you know, mm -hmm. one major. Yeah, right. And it totally makes sense. There's nothing wrong with that approach. But you like sometimes you ask yourself, you're like, how does this scale? Like, how do I reach more students or how do I how do I point and click? sort of solutions for this. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, it, and I'm super on board with that. Yeah. And one of the cool things yeah. is like, you don't have to do this alone too. Like Web Piano Academy, you could come to me and you could be like, Logan, I want you to help me with this. We have a school board feature where you, you have the ability here to actually like work uh -huh. with different people in Piano Gym. So there's a school board thing where it's like headmasters are the end all be all. They can do everything. And board yeah. members are really more for content creation. So. Uh, I have a I have a friend here who's who's been uh, he's been supposed to help me out and I, I forget his name if it's PF underscore music or something like that yeah he doesn't exist maybe it's PF music yeah there yeah. we go and so you can add extra people and they will help you and they can they can log in and then when they go to their teacher dashboard they will see your your uh, content and it's just super cool man I'm just like like it's super collaborative it's super easy. Uh, it is is not optimized yet. I'm working on that, and it is it is definitely one of those things where I think there's a lot of of really cool, exciting ways to approach this. And um, I, I I do think that like uh, hopefully with the with your help, Dr. Antonella, we can share this with the world. Uh, okay. But other than that, I mean like if you have opinions or thoughts, even to improve this, that's really yeah. what I'm looking for. I, I think, I think uh, the problem that uh, teachers might have with that is, you know, the copyright material and then kind of the pieces that are under copyright and then, you know, the books that are under copyright and, uh, you know, things that they use and they used to use. Mm -hmm. um, well, so is it I copyright think... if you make your own sheet music and then you upload it? Like no, no, not... no, that's not no, no, no. Yes, of course not. But you know, right. there are certain pieces that they use, or there are certain mm -hmm. piano schools that they use, and then I kind of right, that's right. kind of for that probably that's the, what they're. And then the, um, uh, I think many of my colleagues are not really familiar with kind of you know uploading that kind of file and that kind of type. That, those are, might be the difficulties that might be. Um, it, uh, might create some obstacles, you know, sure. in yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But so you know, I think I think if uh, that would be clear, you know, there would be kind of a guide how to do that, you know, mm -hmm. how to, and then they see how useful that is, then then they might jump in, you know, because it's, yeah, you know, well, like, and a good example is I even saw on your YouTube video, right? You were doing Hannon exercises. You were like right. for the virtuoso, yes. and I was like, oh, she gets it. This lady gets it. <laughs> and I, I reached out to the people who made the hand and exercise. I was like, Hey, can I use it? And at this point I haven't heard back. So I'm just like, all right, it's a free game. Let's, let's That's upload a, it. No. Um, yeah. But it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a public domain. First yeah. Of so all. exactly. Yeah. And like, how, it is in public domain I mean, if you write it down and especially the hand and exercises that he copied that himself. Right. So that's that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just changed a little bit. So you change a little bit and it's okay. But uh, I mean, for example, yeah, and an exercises are something that you could use back minuets, uh, Beethoven pieces, and all those things. So it's something. Right. Right. And there's, there's uh, all this classical work, too. It's not yeah. just that. Like Peter and the Wolf, come on, dog. Nobody's going to sue you over that. Just throw that up on there and just be like, here, you can practice. <laughs> but um, so, but the, the, I think that there the are also options with uh, work, which is public domain if you reach an agreement with uh, yeah. you know the publisher then that is sold to the side and then it's kind of there for you know mm -hmm. whoever uh, wants to have that as a, I, I which is yeah, you're, everything you're saying absolutely and this is my disclaimer i'm like looking at the internet i'm like hey don't don't do anything i can't afford to get sued this is not right. <laughs> this, yeah i don't no, want to see know. taylor swift on here okay this is <laughs> No, we don't want that. So, yeah. but uh, it's uh, and especially for exercises like scales, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you really, as a teacher, you assign something and you mm -hmm. really specifically write down, like uh, you know, practice measure one and two. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, right hand, left hand, and together. And the students mm -hmm. come back and it's like, oh, I just practiced the first line and just do the right hand. And you say, okay, that's not what I said. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. What you were supposed to do. <laughs> but, <laughs> It is basically that, especially the youngest uh, students, they really miss uh, the, um, you know, how to practice. So that's, so that's for beginners is the most important thing. You know, mm -hmm. I had, a, and especially now, if you think about all the students having problems with um, learning, uh, somebody who has a learning disability, right, mm -hmm. uh, as a ADHD or 
anything, you know. Anything. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then uh, having just one measure in front of you is much easier, right? So you have that one measure, just look one node after the other, you learn mm -hmm. it, and then you add the second measure. It's less confusing to yeah, them and less, less upsetting. Absolutely. So, yeah, and I think it's a great tool, you know, it's really kind of favored to suggest to my colleagues to start using it because mm -hmm. it is something that we really need, uh, you know, it's just like as a teacher, uh, you really need to, to give to the student. And we don't have the, you know, I don't have, I can send, uh, I can circle the measures that the students have to practice, but having something then on the screen for the students today, especially, mm -hmm. so cool, and then, you know, they uh, might enjoy practicing that better, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, and it's, it's, um, I, I use, I use piano gym. Like I built Piano Gym and I use Piano Gym, so I'm constantly like in this situation where like, well, maybe I should flesh this out or do do X, Y, and Z. And so it's like it's not like I'm just like creating a tool set and walking away. Like I yeah, I'm and the thing is like a, it, I think I think the piano teachers don't really kind of um, haven't understood really well. If you have talked to somebody, had they said that, that, that you were stealing their job or something? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think it is. It is a, it is a tool that they can use to you know teach better. And yeah, not, uh, you know, it's not a kind of a competition to a piano school because you still need it's complimentary. Yeah, it's, it's not, yeah. I'm not, I, and I know I'm not looking to take jobs. I'm just like, come on, man. I wish, because yeah, here's right. the thing I wish you made web, like, not like I'm not dogging on you. I'm just saying, like, I wish Web Piano Academy existed that I would just sign up, make an account, and start studying. And then I follow you on yeah. YouTube and I'm just like, dang, this lady right. gets yeah. it. She's the best. Like, yeah. making so, content yeah. creation is hard content creation yeah. in the context of learning tools non-existent right. it's just yes non -existent. i mean i i when i started so i started this channel about 11 12 years ago i mean there were no videos but uh uh, I shared the first videos, which are no longer online uh, now, but um, I shared the first videos with um, some colleagues and they said, oh, you're doing that, but you know, then students won't come to lesson. And I was like, why? <laughs> because I'm making videos of YouTube. I mean, it's a very different thing. It's a helpful tool, right? As you, it's not that I'm kind of uh, really kind of, I have more students now than ever. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, I'm helping my students by publishing videos on YouTube and telling them. Well, and it saves you time as a teacher as well, because how yeah. many times as like a teacher, have you ever sat down and been like, dog, you didn't practice, did you? You didn't yeah. practice. Like if they come to practice, having actually studied the material, you can focus on performance instead right. of yes. like, you know, execution. You're focusing on like dog, like I, I saw your video, like again, the Apple video where you're like, if you play it like this, boo but like if you actually play it and and actually feel it it's a right. whole different thing and yeah, i, I yeah, just yeah. That's and the, it that's comes, what i want to i mean it really students so the mistakes that students make is usually uh, rhythm and uh, you know not reading rhythm so those the, the, the students uh, make that mistake at home i mean i'm not at home i can correct them so and then your tool is basically integrating that kind of learning because mm -hmm. you know you just like uh out auto correcting the student during the week uh, you know to practice yeah, in the proper absolutely. way absolutely and to be honest like i get bit by that all the time while i use piano gym because i'm like yeah i'm holding the note and it's like no you really didn't and i'm just like yeah. oh man like it's it's very common to think you know how long you should be holding something and and all of that and we have a metronome on here too um yeah. and it's just like all these pieces are there um and I, yeah, like disclaimer, I'm just one guy building this, so please have patience. But I, <laughs> yeah. I am doing my best to support anybody. That's here. great. So I, I have a question. Um, so you, I, I've seen just um, scores with uh, you know one hand or something. Is it, is it does it go also with the grand stuff so that you play chords and then you correct that? Uh, at the same yeah. Time? So this is a technical question, and I, I really am glad you asked that because it's it's kind of one of those things where it's a little fuzzy. Um, yeah. You will see with things like the like uh, this piece right here, where it does a single piece and then other piece. You can do a grand staff with rests. You can do a single measure. How it works from a technical implementation is we we use uh, the web browser. There's something called the Web Audio uh, Toolkit, uh -huh. and it interfaces with MIDI devices, which is right now we only support MIDI devices. And that means as a result, we can only be used in Chrome and Microsoft Edge or Chromium based browsers. Mm -hmm. Technically, we work with Firefox, but you need to install a, a plugin for it, which is fine. It's just up to you. 
Um, I'm always like, use Firefox because Google sucks, but blah, blah, blah. And the whole thing is, yeah. is like, it doesn't really matter what you play as long as you hit the pitch. When you're right. doing MIDI input, we actually get those pitches as unique key codes that are associated yeah. with that pitch. So yeah. really, as long as you play the pitch, we are grading based on the pitch being played. Mm -hmm. um, so you, it doesn't obligate you to have to worry about left or right hand, but mostly making music that focuses on like, play this note. And if yeah, you but play, if you play, if you play, I don't know, a chord, uh, the left hand and the melody, the right hand, it would uh, just like um, take it as well, right? It will work as well. Yeah, as absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can do left and right hand. Like, and so here, I'll, a good example is this, where it's like, The, each time I was playing both yeah. C3 and C4, but it doesn't yeah. care because as long as you're playing the note, that's what it's focused on. And I can yeah. I can go on at length. This is a hugely complex issue that I've had to make concessions from a design perspective and a user experience perspective. Because yeah. um, imagine like 16th notes or 32nd notes, right? Like there are yeah. a lot of difficulties that come with like, do you determine grading in the immediate range or do you just listen for the note it's there's a lot of things that um that are tricky about it and it's not solved yet i haven't solved it like in like uh, I, I i still haven't settled on a solution where i'm like this is perfect oh my god yeah but it is it is definitely a, a solution that um i think will help anybody from uh, absolute beginners to uh, definitely intermediate yeah. players um i do think like when you're playing like rachmaninoff i'm like that's that's well let's let's think about that one so <laughs> I yes, I mean uh, until Rachmaninoff, they have a long way to go. You know, that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work in a short period of time. Uh, if you if you're learning piano, you know that uh, it takes a long time to really kind of you know learn how to coordinate right and left to play musical, you play with a pedal and play everything. So uh, yeah. it doesn't really kind of work in one day. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's awesome. So mm -hmm. any wishes for the future? Oh okay. man, I wish I won the lottery so I could hire somebody. Accept that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I wish. It, okay, so like here's the thing. Uh, 2022, I do have a roadmap. Uh, my roadmap is to kind of make things a little bit better in terms of the user experience. There's something called lesson slides, which is I haven't built out yet. Uh, and this is kind of something we didn't even really get to talk about uh, a yeah. lot. Is that when you when you have a a school you would like, it's very common to say like, I sure I make flashcards and then I make, uh, I make some, uh, some lessons that go with it. And one of the, the difficulties is you may have like a lesson and it's just doing some flashcards, but you may want to give some supplementary slide content that's available for that. So yeah. in 2022, the plan is to make some, uh, to integrate with Google slides where you publish Google slides that then yeah. are embedded directly into that. And then in the Google slides, you could embed Web Piano Academy YouTube videos or other pieces. And the thing is, is like uh, the reason I chose that from a design decision is because uh, it's very friction free. I can deliver that within a matter of months once I have that uh, a couple of other pieces gone uh, yeah. and handled. And uh, then you would have this idea of like when you go to a flashcard, you would then be like, oh, here's your flashcard. Here's some breadcrumbs that are saying this is from school A, from course B, lesson C. And by selecting those, you can actually drill into that to uh, ha have the ability to kind of associate uh, learning. And at the end of the day, really, Piano Gym's focus is flashcards. So you don't, the only thing that require is required for a lesson is a flashcard set. But it would be cool to have supplementary. Uh, they're called uh, slide decks. I'm not sure yeah. if I'm into that that formal definition, but you'd have slide decks uh, available. Yeah. I would like to get to roadmaps, but that's not a priority. My priority would be uh, slide decks. And then after slide decks, I'd like to see if I could get some uh, some pitch detection going, like official pitch detection, because I would love to take Piano Gym from being Piano Gym to being Music Gym, which is actually all a right, lot harder yes. for me to trademark because apparently people think about Music Gym all the time. So, <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Yeah, so they, they, those are the things. Um, I really do, though, like, uh, if anybody is listening, if anybody's watching, like, uh, I would love for you to reach out to me. It's very easy for everybody who's watching. And, and I'll share this with you, uh, Dr. Antonella, but, like, uh, yeah. if, if you're interested, I'm on social media. Please reach out. I've, I've had a lot of passionate people reach out to me and say, oh, this is really cool. 
and then they kind of ghost me. And it's just like, if you're interested <laughs> in contributing, I am here. I have a Discord server. I stream on Twitch when I have the chance. Yeah. I have a subreddit. I'm on Instagram. It's mostly memes, but I'm here. And uh, if, you, if you're interested in helping or have questions, we even have support channels for you where you can uh, like if you get, if you have questions, you're like, uh, how do I do it? And then you can post a help ticket. Like I, I've been doing everything in my power to make this a, uh, open and transparent tool to create a community. Cause again, my biggest wish, if I had one big wish is that we make a community. I don't want piano gym to be like Facebook. I don't want it to be like Instagram. I don't want it to be like Pinterest. I don't want a closed ecosystem. I want a place where everybody can come here mm -hmm and focus on their skills and deliberate practice and growth and share that with others. I don't, I don't want to, to block anybody from success. And that would, that would be the biggest deal. Uh, for That's me. awesome. So, Beautiful. I yeah. like that. Uh, and then I can, kind of, uh, I will start to my web piano Academy school on your platform and, um, Fantastic. and I'm, I'm waiting for <laughs> the videos to be embedded so that we can just like uh, combine uh, everything together in one platform. Right. Um, cool. that's awesome. Beautiful. Very yeah. good. So thank you so much for being, uh, with me today here on this live stream. Uh, so whoever is listening to that up to this point, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to subscribe to his channel and then yeah. to his social media as well. Yeah. Um, we, we really need the support and especially I really kind of appreciate whoever is uh, um, really kind of uh, working so much and then on content, which is like free to use, right? Like on Web Piano Academy, on Piano Gym, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, putting our skills out there, you know, to, you know, and reach the community and that's for free. And we didn't have that, uh, that those skills for free, right? We didn't right, get right. Them. Yeah. Cause honestly, man, like I just want people to be happy and grow and maybe, right. maybe when they're playing Wonderwall, they can be like, this one's for piano gym and Dr. Antonella <laughs> at web piano Academy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> very good. I, I wish you a very, very nice weekend, uh, wherever you are on the other side of the States. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I will enjoy my snow here in Buffalo. <laughs> Oh, be safe. Be safe. Make a snowman for me. So. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.